So uh, I'm Deb Bryant from Oregon State University's Open Source Lab, and I'm here with Dugan Petty, who's the state of Oregon's CIO. And we're here at the Government Open Source Conference, and I have cornered Dugan for a conversation. Uh, Dugan, I have not seen you since the state of Oregon won the uh, Digital Center for Governments uh, Award. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, yeah, we're really excited. Uh, Oregon got a B plus in the Center for Digital Governments Digital State Survey. Um, to put that in context, there were four states that got A's. Uh, so we're in a pretty good category of, of moving up. In fact, one of the things that they said, uh, or the state's trending up, uh, and that they, they made a reference to Oregon that, uh, that we had a unique set of circumstances. So we're excited about trending up, and I think the unique set of circumstances is in the past, uh, they have looked for states that had a very centralized structure, and if you fit that requirement, you did well. Um, this time they ask states to tell the story of what they've accomplished. And what we've been trying to do for the past few years is to look at our strengths and take advantage of our strengths and move that forward and figure out how to mitigate our weaknesses, but not try to change the culture that we operate in in state government. So what and do you attribute? What would you say your top two strengths are? Well, I think there's a tremendous amount of innovation that takes place at the agency level. And so working with the agencies to figure out how we unlock that innovation and bring that forward. So when you start looking at the outcomes that Oregon accomplishes, it's a pretty impressive story. And we were able to tell that story, which actually put us on the radar screen. We'd, we'd never been in the top 10, never been in the top 25. Uh, the story was that uh, top 10 states, if you weren't one of the top 10, you must have been number 11, number 12, or probably close. The fact of the matter is we were never on the radar screen. Today we are. Well, that's congratulations. No, so thanks. this morning, you were on our executive uh, roundtable, uh, an update on the state of open government. We talked extensively about open data, had some other cities and uh, states and even the federal government right. involved. I was very interested in hearing uh, how you've taken the federal initiative and started uh, converting some of your assets. Tell me a little bit about what Oregon's doing. Okay, well, uh, we've had probably the most mature data sets in Oregon, um, in the whole state of Oregon, is, is, is attributable to the partnership between counties, state agencies, and federal government, and we've developed pretty rich uh, geospatial data sets. So we had some history of operating and for actually partnering with the Oregon State University through the Valley Library to put that up on Oregon Explorer. So we were really doing some of that to begin with, but then we wanted to begin to extend the richness of those data sets out across the whole enterprise. We can see that citizens are wanting more information from government, and we need to step up and be prepared to provide that data and information. And so we're running a pilot right now that ends in the middle of next month that we call OregonData.gov that begins to put up uh, data sets from state agencies in a way that that anybody can download it, they can search it, they can massage the data, they can they can see it in ways that make sense to them, and then they can build off of that data. Uh, and so we're excited about beginning beginning this. And right now it's pretty heavy to GIS data, but in talking with agencies, we've got a number of agencies that are saying, yeah, you know, we're going to use this because we want to get that information out. We know that citizens and uh, people rely on us for this, and this system will allow them to get that out. So it's a first step, and I think it's an important step because this is really how we uh, begin to engage with this interaction with citizens. For a long time, our websites, our e-government sites have been uh, about just providing information, people come and get it, but it's static information. They can't do anything with it. So this is the step of actually giving them information that they can do something with and uh, put it into a form that, that they can look at and is meaningful to them and be able to see it in ways that make sense to them. The other thing we're doing with this is that we're establishing a channel that allows us to hear back from them about what data they want and get feedback from them. And so that's beginning to, to fulfill the promise of two-way interaction between citizens and state agencies. So how, what does it look like if you're starting to uh, develop a citizen engagement strategy? What, what's the first one or two things that Oregon's doing in that so, area? 
so one of the things that we're doing in that area is that we're doing a benchmark. Uh, we will be doing a benchmark right now about uh, our e-government program and how usable it is and whether citizens are able to access it and get the kind of information. And we're going to continue to benchmark over time uh, how usable the site is, our usability, whether it's got the kind of information necessary. So that idea of understanding what the citizen needs uh, and understanding what they expect and listening to them is a very important part of having citizen engagement. All right, well, thank you for taking time to uh, share what you're working on. Congratulations again oh, on the award. Thank you very much. Okay.